Hi everybody, this is Mr. Foley, and welcome to podcast 13.3, where we get to use the solver instead of just introduce it, and go over the Chatelio's principle and the shifts that go with it. So, hang on and get ready for the phone, and of course, ice diagrams, baby. Okay, so first we start with two moles of bromine are placed in a two liter flask at some really hot temperature, which is of sufficient energy to split apart some of the molecules. If Kc equals blah at this temperature, what are the equilibrium concentrations of the bromine molecules and atoms? So this starts off by saying Br2 is placed in a container and some of them split apart, which should give you Br plus Br. By the way, if it said atoms, that means it's not going to be charged, which is odd, but the way it is. Um, two moles in a two liter flask means I need to change that to molarity. So two divided by two is one molar. And I'm going to do an ice diagram as always. And what I'm looking for are the equilibrium concentrations of Br and Br2, which it says equilibrium concentrations of those atoms. So I have one molar initially and zero and zero. Again, I emphasize it's molar, so I remember to switch that. On um, the change, is going to be minus x plus x plus x. So at equilibrium, I have one minus x, x, and x. My k expression is K equals, um, and these are all gases. I know it doesn't seem like it, but it's really hot, so it makes sense that they are. Br, whoops, Br the atom squared over Br2. All right, my Kc is 4E negative 4 equals X squared over 1 minus X. This is where we get to use our solver again and hope for the best. So, um, calculators assembled. Yes. Okay, so remember you have to hit the math button and then, oops, zero. We'll get you to the solver. It says EQN equals. Um, and to rearrange this, it's going to be X squared divided by quantity 1 minus X quantity minus 4E negative 4. So X squared divided by quantity 1 minus X quantity minus 4 second E negative 4. Enter. It says X equals 0 0.000001. Um, and then alpha. Enter. And I didn't do it. So I moved back up to the X part and hit alpha. Enter. And I have X equals point. 0.0198 molar. Okay, so that means my equilibrium concentration that is Br because Br equals X. Br2 is 1 minus X, which would be 1 minus 0.01. Oops, I quit out of that. Second so quit. 1 minus 0.0198, which would be 0.9802 molar, and that's it. Okay, okay, the hydroxide concentration of a solution that is initially 0.02 molar nicotine. Okay, see if nicotine is that. And here's my equation. So, water is a liquid, so that's not going to be my equilibrium expression, so I get to ignore it at all, or entirely. And this is 0.020 molar, so 0.020 molar. Uh, zero and zero, and I'm looking for this. So again, an ice diagram. Do 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 do. So minus x plus x plus two x. Point oh two minus x x and two x. Kc of nicotine is seven point seven e negative two. Kc is nick H two positive. Whoops. Nick H2 2 plus times OH negative squared. And again, the squared comes from the coefficients over NIC. And 7E negative 7. Oops. 7.7. .7, wow. 7.7E negative 17 equals X times 2X quantity squared over 0.02 minus x. Now when you look at this ugly little beastie, 
you'll be glad you have the solver, and you should be thinking that now. So what I would put into my solver would be x times 2x quantity squared um, over quantity 0 0.02 minus x quantity oops, minus 7.7e negative 17. So clear that bad boy off. And then I have to get back to my solver again. Math, 0. x times 2, whoops, x times quantity 2x quantity squared. Remember that squaring the 2, people forget to make that a 4. I know you know 2 squared is 4, but still. Divided by quantity 0 0.02 minus x and quantity minus 7.7 second e negative 17. And I type that into my x instead of typing it into my equation. So I have to do it all over again. x times quantity 2x, hopefully quantity squared faster this time. Um, divided by quantity 0 0.02 minus x quantity minus 7.7 second e negative 17 enter x equals 0 0.01 enter go back up to that x thing alpha enter and I have 7.727 but I'd be a fool if I put that down I need to scroll all the way down to the end to see that it is e negative 7 okay so use your right arrow to go all the way down there you saw the 7.7 Two seven, and that mathematically makes this dumb. You can have a negative molarity of something. So if it ever is a number above one, you have to scroll all the way to the right to get that, and that equals x. The hydroxide ion concentration is two times that, so hydroxide equals, um, I guess quit, two times seven point two seven second e negative seven, which is one point four five. Whoops. E negative 6 molar. And don't do all that and forget a molar. Okay. Le Chatelier's principle. When a stress is placed on a system at equilibrium, the system will adjust so as to relieve that stress. Meaning, go to equilibrium. Go directly to equilibrium. Do not pass go. If you're not at equilibrium, you're on your way there. Um, change in concentration of reactants or products. So if I add reactants, it moves away from the reactants. If I add products, it moves away from the products. If you add something, you have too much of it, you move away from it. Okay. So if I give you a whole bunch of money, you will go away from having a whole bunch of money by spending your money. If you run out of money, so if you, this said change, so I did the adding. If you run out of money, which means that you lose all your money or spend it, what you do is you work to get more money. So you work harder, you work more hours, you get more whatever it is to get more money. You spend less. Um, change in volume or pressure, and this is for gases only. Volume and pressure only affects gases. Change in temperature acts like a reactant or product. Um, we've seen before where we write heat plus reactants yields products. Thank you, more. All right. Adding a noble gas does nothing. Partial pressures are not affected. So let's look at these. Um, responses to stress. If I have three hydrogen plus nitrogen yields two and H3, it's in equilibrium. If I change the concentration, if I add H2, if I add H2, I'll have too much H2. So adding H2 will make it shift. I have too much away from H2 to products. If I add N2, <coughs> it will shift excuse me, away from N2 because you have too much of it to shift away from it, which again would be two products in this case. Um, if I remove NH3, so if I remove NH3, I don't have enough NH3. So the NH3 one for part B, if I remove NH3, I respond to replace NH3 by shifting to the product side. Now this does not mean we always shift to the products. How do you remove NH3? Um, you can do a side reaction or you can do some separation techniques like um, distillation and stuff like that. Precipitation is the most common way to remove it. If I change volume or pressure, so if I change volume or pressure I look at gases. Okay. So if I increase the volume 
um, equilibrium will respond to fill that volume by shifting to more gases. Now gases are based on the coefficient. So this side has two gases and this side has four gases. So if I increase the volume, I will shift to the left because that will fill the empty space that's created. If you increase the volume, you've created empty space. To fill that space, you shift to the side with more gases. If you increase the pressure, that means you have too many particles, right, for equilibrium. So if you want to have less particles, you shift to the side with less gas, okay? So the right-hand side has less gas, so for this one, you'll shift to the right. Okay. Um, if I add helium, it has no change because no effect on gases in the reaction. Because remember, that they're noble, and according to the ideal gas law, the particles themselves don't take up any space. So no effect on gases, so no shift. And that's a tricky one AP love to throw at you. Let's look at another response to stress. Um, change in temperature. So if delta H is negative 92, we know that's exothermic, so heat's going to be a product. So right away, I put plus 92 kilojoules on my product side. So if I change the temperature, um, increase the temperature, you would treat a heat as a reactant or a product. So if I increase the temperature, I would have too much heat on the right-hand side. Heat is on the right. I've added heat on the right-hand side. It will shift left, right? It'll shift away from the heat. So if you increase the temperature, shift away from heat. Good. Equilibrium is a temperature dependent constant similar to the rate constant little kf or little kr. The slope of the line, however, is different. Whoops. I'm trying to move this down. I didn't do what I wanted to do. Sorry. Um, so if I want to find the delta H of this reaction, I could graph ln big K versus 1 over T, and I would get delta H of the reaction. Now that's the reaction. Remember the other one when we played around with it. Little k gave us equilibrium constant. So ln KEQ was this equation right here, so I could calculate the delta H of the reaction. Um, this equation is rarely used. It's not even on your equation sheet. This one, I believe, is on your equation sheet, but you want to write this down because we use it a lot. Um, ln K1 over K2 equals delta H of the reaction over R. And again, we're talking about delta H is in joules. So my R is an 8.314 joule. And this is a temperature in kelvins. And this is an equilibrium K. Okay. So this would be another way to find delta H for reaction or another way to find um, K at a different temperature. So if you can imagine, finding Ks at different temperatures would be very, very helpful um, in industry. If you change the temperature, if you can shift it so it'll make more products of a certain thing, it'll work. Okay, if I had AGCL, you'd think, oh, it's a reactant. It'll shift to the right, but it has no effect. The reason why it has no effect is... The reason why it has no effect is um, because it's not in the equilibrium expression. Yes, chemistry can be so exciting that you have to, you know, take a little break, I suppose. Um, if you add water, if you add water, it's true, more of this will dissolve. But, this would be no effect. Um... What happens is you establish a new equilibrium, but the ratios will be the same. So if you add more water, what's going to happen is, yes, more solid will change to this to reestablish equilibrium, but it's not going to um, do that. So if I add an NaCl, what happens is that NaCl instantly creates Cl negative. So if I add NaCl, it really adds Na positive, which does nothing. And it adds Cl negative, which makes it shift away from Cl negative. 
And if it shifts away from CL negative, then it will shift to the left. And now, we spent so much time on our wonderful reactions. If I add concentrated NH3, one of our um, excess concentrated reactions, look, excess concentrated with a D block metal. If I add excess concentrated a NH3 to a D block metal, what I get is AG NH3. Remember, this is plus one, silver is plus one. So taken twice, plus one. Now, if that happens, this is not AG positive anymore. So what this does is it removes AG positive. So to get AG positive back, it'll shift right. Okay, so observe value of K for the ammonia synthesis reaction as a function of temperature. Find delta H of the reaction. So if I have these temperatures in Kelvins and I have these Ks, remember my equation for this was ln K1 over K2 equals, this is the one I told you to write down, delta H over R times quantity 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. All right. So we only need two data points. So um, we can pick any ones that we want to do. I would prefer to pick the top two just so my mind doesn't wander. So I'll call this 1 and call this 2. So ln of 500, quantity 500 over... That's not a ln. Eh, I'll even change my color. That was so bad. So I'll start over here. ln of K1, which is 90 over 3 equals delta H, which is what I'm looking for, over 8.314 times, and I'm going to set this up over here, 1 over T2, which is 600, minus 1 over T1, which is 500, whoops, and that's it. I guess I don't need two parentheses there. And then I would do the math. Um, this is already going long, so I'm going to hit pause and put it in my calculator and see what I get. Okay, when I ran through this my calculator, I did not check my answer, but I had delta H equals negative 84.832 joules, which would be negative 84.8 kilojoules, which seems reasonable for a delta H. Yay, review. Solve the rules, doesn't it, though? Oh, man, isn't that nice? Add a stress, shift to relieve, relieve it. Remember, if you add away... Remove toward. And then um, the other thing that's very important is solids do not shift equilibrium. This is not an equilibrium expression. Sorry again, we're over 15, but you know what? It's been a wonderfully happy learning podcast, and someone got so excited they had to go to the bathroom. And you have to learn that the ice diagram is the best thing in all. Have a good one. Bye.